So Apple just released iOS 16.1 beta 2 to all developers to test out and see exactly what they're improving on little by little until we get that 16.1 public release to everybody. And in this one, we do have some tangible features that we can actually show off. And also, if you guys do take notice, this is the new cinematic mode on the 14 Pro Max. So leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. But without further ado, let's talk about 16.1 beta 2. Let's get it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. Firstly, let's look over to see how big this actually was. So as you guys can see, this was 5.25 gigabytes in terms of storage and how much it's gonna take up when updating. So iOS 16.1 beta 2 is a full five gigabytes. Give yourself at least 10 gigs of open storage to get this installed correctly. And we're using the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the 256 gigabyte variant, and it installed very quickly with no issues whatsoever. So that is the size of the actual iOS 16.1 beta 2. And then if we go into the actual build number, so we go into our settings, go into general, go into about, and then go to the iOS version, we have iOS 16.1 and the naming is 20B5050F. So if you guys do follow these beta updates, you know that the closer and closer we get to that RC edition, that means this letter at the very end will go down in value, quote unquote, so it'll get down to C, B, A, and then finally they'll release that last letter, and that'll be our RC edition, which is the edition that goes out to the entire public once it's ready to go. And also there was a modem update. So Apple's always working on making sure we have the best connectivity possible. And so far on the 14 Pro Max, on the new eSIM technology, and we have a video coming out soon explaining eSIM a little bit better and the process of eSIM. But overall, the eSIM transition has been pretty seamless so far. And then let's quickly talk about the one splash screen that I did notice that was new. So I'm gonna go into my photos. I took a screenshot of it. And then inside of the Find My application, there's actually a new splash screen. So it lets you know about findable when powered off. So this is a new feature that actually came with iOS 15. So whenever somebody powers off your iPhone, it is still findable via Find My until the battery completely drains out. And that's great for, again, in situations where somebody steals your iPhone, because normally if somebody steals your iPhone, the first thing they're gonna do is turn that thing off. But now with Find My, you're still able to locate it to a certain extent. You can find your AirPods and their case, and I'm sure Apple's getting ready for the new AirPods Pro 2 release, which we will be getting in the studio on Friday, and we're gonna be reviewing those, comparing those to the Pro 1s, and comparing them to other companies like Bose in the space that are in that $250 to $300 price point. And then also we have a refresh map, so tap locations on the updated map to open the Maps app. And basically what that is, before Find My used to have a very watered down version of Maps, but now it has the full-fledged Apple Maps at its disposal in the Find My app. And now let's talk about what's new. So actually in the, the first thing that you might notice is that shared libraries is actually available. So the iOS 16 and iOS 16.1 beta one, Apple introduced shared libraries. So if you go into your settings, go into your photos application, there's a new option for shared library and I actually created one, but I don't really use it at all. It's just created it to show you guys exactly what it's like. But in the shared library situation, it's exactly what it sounds like. You create a shared library and you can take images, put those images in the shared library for anybody that's in that shared library to see. And then when you set up the shared library, you can actually share them automatically into shared library or you can share them manually. I decided to share them manually because I don't want every single photo to go into a shared library. And just so you guys know, the owner of the shared library, it goes into their iCloud space. So if you are the owner of the shared library, it's gonna take up space on your iCloud, not the other people and vice versa. If somebody else opens up a shared library and they share it with you, then they take ownership of that iCloud storage. But what's new with shared library is if you go into photos, there's a little option on the top right hand corner right there. That's not part of the screenshot. As you can see in all the images, there's a little person right there. You press that drop down menu and all you have to do is press move to shared library and then it'll show up in that shared library, which is great to see. So if that's something you wanna get into, by all means go for it. The next thing Apple updated is you probably see it right now on the screen. It is a new battery indicator. So before with iOS 16, Apple actually introduced a new battery indicator with battery percentage inside of the battery indicator, but it still showed a full battery technically, even if it was only at 1% or 20% or 50%. And I'll show you with some B-roll of the 13 Pro Max that I have running 16.1 beta one. So in beta two, they actually listened to us, which is crazy to think about. And they actually made it so the battery shows an actual indication of how much battery is left, not only from a numerical percentage standpoint, but also by actually cutting that in half. So at 49%, you can see that we actually have a 49% filled battery, which is great to see. Another battery related update, which is something I actually didn't notice up until recently, is normally when you plugged in your iPhone, if you were on iOS 16, iOS 15, or any of those in between, and you go to your lock screen, it'll actually show you that you're 49% charged. But with iOS 16.1 beta one, they actually removed that battery percentage because they probably thought it was redundant, but they did bring it back. So if you go to your lock screen and you are charging your phone, then it's 49% charged and it'll show it there. 
And also for this new battery indicator, they did bring it down on 16.1 beta one. They finally allowed everything from an iPhone 10 or newer to get that battery percentage. Previously, the only phones that could get it are the 13 and the 14, but now every single phone, including the minis, which have less space up there, will be able to use that battery percentage indicator. And then I don't know if anybody noticed, but with 16 and 16.1, every single time you tried to copy and paste something, there would be another prompt. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what that looks like with the 13 Pro Max. And there's a prompt to let you know from a security standpoint that let's say messages would like to copy and paste from Safari to let you know exactly where that stuff that's on your copy clipboard is coming from, which from a security standpoint is great, but you were only supposed to do it one time. And then, then once you allowed it, that prompt should not have come up, but it kept persisting in the other update. So it's 16.2. Apple did fix that, so if you go into Safari, if I go right here and press copy, go into my notes, and since I already allowed it, all I have to do, press enter, enter, paste, and now that prompt doesn't come up, versus previously, it would definitely come up no matter what. Another issue that's been fixed that I didn't really notice, but a lot of users were talking about, is the three finger gesture to paste or copy, to bring up that actual tool of cut, copy, paste, redo, and undo. Now that's working perfectly fine with that three finger gesture, just tap to undo, or press undo, right here, press undo again, and then it's gone. And then the last thing we notice is if you go into the weather application and you go down a little bit, the actual maps is actually a little bit bigger now. So a little bit more view, a little bit more of a viewpoint to see exactly what's going on. You get a little bit more map data, which is great to see. I'm not somebody that lives in the weather app. I just kind of check the weather and move on with my day. But overall, that's a new update. But that is everything new that we can actually notice with 16.1 beta 2. But now from an actual battery performance perspective, let's go into the battery. Now keep in mind, this is the 14 Pro Max and we've had this since Friday night. And I think I activated it Saturday morning, I'll be honest. So we're not gonna have too much of a sample size, but if we go into battery, me personally, I've been feeling a little less battery life compared to my 13 Pro Max. And I did turn off the always on display because that's one of the first things I did. But if you go over the last four days, you can see we're doing about two hours and 47 minutes of screen on time, 38 minutes of screen idle time. So definitely I'll report back as we start to use the phone more and more because normally I'm doing about eight to nine hours on a single day, but it was the weekend and I usually tend to be off my phone on the weekends. So let's see what it looks like after this entire week goes through and we're good to go. But we'll see on a day like Sunday, we had nine hours and 20 minutes of screen on time. A day like Saturday, we had seven hours and 47 minutes of screen on time with only about 70% battery taken up. And then so far today, we've used up less than 50% battery and we have about five hours and 42 minutes of screen on time, which should give you anywhere from 10 to 12 hours of screen on time on your iPhone, which is absolutely amazing. So we do have the Pro Max and I just can't wait to see actually what the iPhone Plus is gonna be able to do. And then the rest of it from a performance standpoint, everything works as advertised, right? Multitasking works, you know, all this stuff works. The dynamic island is working great. So if I lower the volume so we don't get copyrighted, we press play, the dynamic island is showing that PNB rock stuff, which I'm listening to. So overall performance is, in my opinion, really, really good so far with these new beta updates. But that is pretty much it. So let's finish up this video. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, Apple did make some small improvements and actually listened to us for the first time in a long time with that new battery percentage and actually showing the battery percentage with the actual image and the animation versus just the actual number value on the battery on the top right hand corner. But also the next thing that I do like that they actually fixed was the actual clipboard paste and copy bug that was going on. Because normally once you gave permission to the application, you shouldn't have to actually give them permission over and over again. So, so kudos to Apple for fixing that relatively quickly. But that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And also let me know, did you guys pick up a new iPhone 14 or 14 Pro? Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are enjoying it, where you came from. Did you come from a 13, a 12? I'm curious to know how many years you guys waited between generations of iPhones. But that's gonna do it, everybody. If you guys do wanna watch some more iOS, iPadOS, and iPhone content, click on one of these videos right here because we are working on some iPadOS stage manager content coming real soon. Until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.